Hi, welcome back to the shack. Uh, today we have another sort of uh, different project to look at. I received this in the mail just a couple of days ago. Uh, as you can see from uh, Swiss Post, this is a PiDP 11 kit from Obsolescence Guaranteed. And what it is is a two thirds size um, front panel for a PDP 1170 machine that you can put a Raspberry Pi on the back uh, and use the SimH um, uh, computer history simulator to simulate an actual PDP 1170 with all the blinking lights and switches and everything. And I'll put a link down below uh, to the obsolescence guaranteed website. But obviously I haven't opened this box up yet. I'm gonna open it up, take a look at the kit uh, and then see what we can do to get it going. All right, now this is a little bit of an expensive kit. I don't remember exactly how much it was um, shipped. I think it was 250 uh, or something like that. Uh, Swiss francs, I assume, uh, converted to US dollars plus a significant amount of shipping. I think it was somewhere in the neighborhood of $300. But it's a gorgeous kit online and I hope it, it is uh, when we look at it in person. All right, this, uh, it's a little hard to tell with as bright as the camera lights are here, but this is a wood um, base that it can set on. It's an unfinished piece of wood. I think it's pine um, that we uh, will, I guess, finish eventually uh, to set the thing on when it's being used. It has an injection molded case, which is part of the reason it's so expensive is because injection moldings in small quantities, uh, it's hard to recover your, your costs. Hmm, okay. And there is the case. Let's get that out of its bag. There is the case. You can see here at the top, it has the embossed digital logo in it. Um, it's got these gorgeous corner details and such. I understand um, that it was actually a, uh, there was significant effort put into making it exactly a two thirds replica of the front panel uh, of the PDP-11. So uh, I unfortunately haven't spent that much quality time with a PDP-11 in hand, but uh, it certainly looks nice. Uh, and then we have a mile of bubble wrap in here. Okay, um, not sure, oh, so this is must be the front panel with its uh, protective wrap. I don't want to take that off just yet all the way, but let's get a look at it, a peek at it. Yeah, there we go. That is pretty gorgeous. And it looks like, yeah, the back is masked off except right where the, the lamps come through. Uh, so that there won't be any bleed. That's that's pretty snazzy. Uh, but there, I guess that's the front panel. We'll set that aside and try to keep from scratching it up just yet. Here is the circuit board, um, which will eventually the Raspberry Pi will plug into. I guess right here is the header for the Raspberry Pi. The Raspberry Pi will plug into the back and then it has all the lights for the uh, address and register displays and then the places to solder the uh, front panel switches. It's a very nice looking board. Nice screen printing, nice layout, pretty black board. Uh, screen printed on both sides. Very impressive. Set that aside as well. 
Uh, then we have, it looks like a laser cut acrylic back. And uh, in the, if you see here, it has uh, some burn mark there. Um, and the instructions say to expect there to be some burn mark uh, on the acrylic. And they say how to, how to clean it off. But these are for the punches for various connectors on the back side. As you can see, we can punch uh, DB25 uh, or DE9 uh, on the back for serial and some more ports. And then these punches over here um, are, I'm, I'm not sure exactly what they're all laid out for, but I think it's USB, HDMI, uh, Ethernet, power, things like that for the, the Raspberry Pi itself. So this will screw onto the back uh, of that front panel that we set aside. And then I should have remaining in here the components. Yep. Get this box out of the way. Uh, the front panel switches, and you see they have uh, little hats on them to make them just the same shape as the original PDP 11 switches. little triangle or switches on the front. Very interesting. I guess I'll have to identify each of these in which direction they flip and whether they're momentary or, um, uh, or toggle and, and get those all laid out properly. There's instructions for that on the website. There's a beautiful set of instructions on how to put this thing together that I guess we'll get to later. Um, and then these, as I understand, are um, alignment pieces. I don't know if this one stays together or breaks apart. I think maybe it breaks apart into two pieces. Uh, from what I remember the instructions, but uh, these are alignment plates to help get the switches all square and perfectly lined up uh, when we put it together. And then I believe this is the same thing for the LEDs um, that go on the, the uh, registers and such. I don't know if this stays on it or not to try to help uh, additionally uh, help with bleed through or, or if this comes back off, but I guess we'll find out later. And then a bag of the various components that we're going to have to install on the board. There's a whole ton of LEDs with spacers. Um, I don't know. I mean, you can see by the number of holes in this board, there's a ton of LEDs. Uh, there's a ton of switches, and then there are um, just rather a, a small number of other components, some um, diodes, um, a few resistors, and then um, a couple of connectors. The connector, for, of course, for the Raspberry Pi itself. Um, it does come with a key switch because the original PDP-11 had a um, key switch on the front panel, so you can see there's a key there. Um, it's, but, uh, it, it's, it's not a very complicated kit compared to some others I've built before. Uh, certainly you, you saw me build the keyboard with 60, uh, switches on it. We won't have quite 60 switches here, but we'll have a fair number. Um, I think it's probably a similar complexity of build to, to putting together something like that keyboard. Um, not a huge deal, a little bit more fiddliness because the LEDs have to go in the right direction and, uh, things like that. So there's the kit as it comes. I am, uh, so far, I think it's a gorgeous kit. The front panel looked great. This, uh, this case looks great. Go together just like that. I guess maybe this goes the other direction. Go together just like that uh, with the uh, front panel here in behind uh, like that maybe switch is coming out here but we will um, uh, look at that here in a minute we'll get it all uh, all these parts taken out and prepped and see about putting together the circuit board and putting together this kit to, to see it in action I'm really I'm very excited I I've uh, think that these this era of mini computers is just amazing of course the PDP 11 was one of the early computers that Unix was ported to so it, it has a uh, special place in my heart for its historical significance. But um, I think this era of mini computers in general is just is fascinating and it's gonna be pretty cool to be able to see as close as one can get 
uh, without having the real thing, the real thing in action, you know, toggle a bootloader into the front panel um, and all that. So we'll, uh, I'll get the camera out of the way, we'll get this stuff cleaned up and then take a look at uh, putting it together. Okay, let's get down to the build. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do this according to the instructions that are online um, on, the, um, on the website for the PyDP 1170. Uh, it looks like a reasonable um, way to build it. I saw some estimates that it's an eight hour build. That seems pretty long to me. I, I wouldn't expect it to take that long, but I haven't done it. Um, we'll see. Just before I get started, let's talk a little bit about the tools uh, that I plan to use. And, and these are the same tools that are listed on the, uh, on the instruction site for the most part. One is uh, a pair of flush cutters, so I can flush uh, cut the leads off the back of the boards and things like that. Another is a pair of small pliers. I will probably use these uh, smooth jaw bent pliers for um, bending leads and stuff like that, although I do have a longer pair of pliers that can get into tighter radiuses and things um, if I need to. Um, I shouldn't need wire cutters or anything like that for this job, although I do have a pair of wire cutters here in case I do need them. Of course, I have some uh, desoldering braid here. This is old Radio Shack desoldering braid. Uh, it was cheap. I think maybe I bought it when Radio Shack was going out of business. Uh, one of the many times it was going out of business. It was cheap and uh, it's not very good. The, the braid is fine, but it doesn't have a good quantity of flux. Uh, at the beginning of the roll, there's a lot of flux on the braid. It works well. Towards the end of the roll, there's not. So uh, some extra flux is necessary for fluxing the braid um, if you need that. I have that here. Uh, of course, a tip cleaner for the soldering iron. Um, and then the soldering iron itself. Of course, you want a temperature controlled iron with, with a tip that's, you know, not tiny, but not huge for a job like this. Uh, you need a tip that's, that's not tiny because there's a fair amount of heat that you're going to need to get into some of these parts. This is a big board. Uh, some of these, um, uh, solder pads are very large, but, uh, not huge because some of them also aren't very far apart. Uh, so I'll run 350 degrees um, Celsius, which is uh, looks like 665 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, according to your taste, that may run a little hot, but uh, but I like it. The solder I'm using is this um, 0.32 or 32 thousandths diameter, I guess 0.81 millimeter um, rosin core um, SN62. So this is 62% 10. 2%, I think, silver, and the balance is, is lead. I like this solder a lot. Uh, it flows well. It sticks well. Um, it's very easy to use. So that's it uh, pretty much for tools. The only other thing I have is the, the board itself and, of course, the packet of components that came with the board. Um, I guess I do also have this vise here. This is a convenient vise. If you don't have one, that's fine, but it allows me to just pull the board out after I put the components in, flip it over, retention it very quickly and uh, and hit up the solder on the back side uh, or whatever. If you don't have one of these, of course, that's fine. You can still build a kit like this, but it will be uh, convenient. This happens to be a pan of ice. Um, I don't know if this is a pan of ice head or not. I think it is, uh, but I was uh, given this uh, circuit board holder by a friend who said he didn't like it. He didn't uh, uh, find it very useful and, you know, would I like to, to try to use it and, and I have liked it. It's been a good holder, but of course it's a pan of ice base. Um, I'm not here to sell pan of ice, uh, but uh, you know, they've, they've worked well for me. So um, that said, let's open up this parts packet here and see if we can't find the diodes. The first thing the instructions say is for us to install is the diodes across these switches on the bottom and then on a few other places on the board. So we'll get those diodes pulled out and see if we can't get them placed on this board. 